Hello, welcome to the fourth week of Garbagist. Anything goes, literally anything. My channel name for this month is another booby file. Read Playboy for the articles because all the co-hosts of Garbagist get naughty channel names. Garbagist is the brainchild of the evil mastermind, screaming, creaming Ollie. And it is the month devoted to reading trashy books, whether that's trashy fiction or even trashy nonfiction. It is the books that some people consider a little salacious or maybe a little bit beneath their dignity, but are awfully fun to read. And that is Garbagest. And what have I been reading for this month? Well, I am going to start off with my non-trashy read. And this was for the, the Book 2 Prize uh, in nonfiction. So I'm just going to mention that I read this book. I will be eventually reviewing it once the prize has been determined. And the book that I read was The Escape Artist, The Man Who Broke Out of Auschwitz to Warn the World by Jonathan Friedland. And I read this in a digital format. And now on to my trashy books, plus one that may or may not be total trash. The first one I read was an audiobook, The Remaking by Clay Chapman. It is a horror novel. I am on the fence to call this a real trashy book or just an ordinary trashy book, but it does have some trashy elements. The book starts off with a recounting of supposedly true life event in a small town in Virginia and is set in the 30s, or there's told about a, uh, an event in the 30s where some townspeople grabbed a woman and her daughter who were living out in the forest. She was an apothecary, giving national, natural remedies. And one of those remedies went wrong, and she was accused of being a witch. So the, the townsmen burned her at the stake with her daughter. And they buried the woman out in the woods, and then took the daughter, supposedly an even worse witch, they buried her in the cemetery, but they filled her grave with cement and surrounded it with crosses. Jump up to the 70s. A filmmaker wanted to do a film about this story. And he was um, a first time filmmaker. And he, he hired a young, young girl, he's nine years old, to play the witch child. And it was going to be a rather bad movie. You could tell that from the beginning. Sort of a Plan 9 from Outer Space type of movie. And while filming, there is a disaster. He's not able to film all of his scenes. And he has to cobble together a version. But this version kind of goes, goes into the classic status. It was a dud when it was first released, but people started really loving this movie, and especially the story of the disaster behind the movie. Flash forward, when that nine-year-old girl is now in her, her mid-30s, 25 years later, she's having a rough life. She sometimes does horror cons and signs film memorabilia about this disastrous film, but her life is not going as expected. And then a new director wants to remake the original disastrous movie into a big Hollywood blockbuster. And he hires the woman who played the witch child, Jessica, to play the mother in the new version. And this version has an even a bigger disaster. And that's all I'm going to say. And this was a very interesting horror novel because it is the story of a ghost girl, a ghost witch girl. Or is it? Is there 
a witch girl from the grave who is haunting these films? Or is it just the product of a disturbed actress? I liked it a lot. It's very atmospheric. You get a lot of details about um, making trashy horror movies. And that was pretty darn good. I do highly recommend it. The audiobook version was done well. There are a few narrators. You have a narrator in the beginning who tells the initial story. You have a narrator for the girl child. And I'm thinking, does the same narrator do the um, adult woman? I can't remember. It might be a different narrator. And then there's a fourth story at the end that sort of ties it all together and makes it a very interesting horror novel. After that, I picked up another digital book. Now, this one's really more of a short story. It's about 41 pages long. It is Black Shot, Deed to Hell by Kurt Barker. And it is another naughty Western. It starts off with your typical Western man named Black Shot. And he comes across some people being robbed. An elderly man, or middle-aged man, and his pretty young, beautiful daughter. And the author does use that pretty young. And I'm trying to say, is she pretty young? Or is she pretty and young? Not the best writing in the world, but you have to live with it. And of course, he's a gunman, and he saves the father and her daughter. And um, he goes back to town, and the father is grateful. But the daughter... Ooh, is she grateful? And you know how this daughter is going to show her gratitude to Black Shot. Mm-hmm. This is a naughty Western. You know what she does. But then the father hires the, the, the gunman to deliver a piece of paper to town. And of course, there's going to be more gunfights and yet another grateful lady. Um, it's really not that good of a story. The writing's not that good. The sex is very um, very plain, and it's, it's descriptive, but it, it's not that exciting. Um, it's currently available on Kindle Unlimited for free. Um, yeah, for free, it's, it's a fine story. There are more stories in the series, but I don't think I'll be continuing this naughty Western series. I like my other naughty Western series a lot more. And those would be uh, The Gunsmith and Lone Star. I also have to get into the long arm naughty Western series. But there you go. And then I read another horror novel. Um, this one was not on my radar. I noticed that it was on Kindle Unlimited, but it was leaving the Kindle Unlimited um, availability at the end of this month. So I decided just to pick it up and read it. Uh, it's Brother by Anna Alphorn. Um, and the title given is Brother. It is not narrated in first person, but it, it's mostly first person-esque story of a man living in the backwoods of West Virginia with um, his family. And his family are cannibals. They like to pick up women, hunt them, kill them, and eat them. Yum, yum, yum. And so it, it, it goes on from there. Um, he's, a, he's a little uneasy with the killing and the eating, but he goes along with it. And as you get into the story, you, you discover that he's actually an adopted member of the family. And then you get into the details of how he got adopted, adopted and why. He has an elder brother who is um, a bit of jealous, a bit of a bully, and he pushes this man, he's 20 in the book, into some very tough situations. And this is mostly a story of sibling rivalry between serial killers who are cannibals. And there is a very good dynamic between these two brothers and what the elder brother is trying to get his younger adopted brother to do. So it is recommended. I don't think it was as good as the remaking. Um, I don't normally read two horror novels in one week, but that's how it worked out. And so 
it's good enough. If, if you find a copy of Brother, go ahead and pick it up. Um, it's not supernatural at all. It's just um, all natural killings and cannibalism. And the last book that I read um, was an audio book. Um, it may not be real trash, but it was My Father, the Pornographer, a memoir by Chris Offit. Chris Offit is a very well-respected literary author of fiction. Um, but this story is about his father and his relationship to his father. His father was a science fiction author, Andrew J. Offit, who wrote a number of science fiction novels that are well respected. Um, Andrew J. Offit has a short story in um, the Harlan Ellison classic, Again, Dangerous Visions. So at one time, he was a very well respected science fiction author. But it turned out science fiction was not his father's most prized writing. He, the father, liked to write pornography. And he wrote over 400 pornographic novels in his lifetime, all under pseudonyms. And this is a story of um, what it's like to grow up with a father who is um, obsessed with pornography. Now, now, the author, Chris, did not really realize his father was that obsessed with pornography when he was growing up. It was just a father who was very aloof, very distant, a little cruel, but not too cruel. And then you get into some of the, the details of um, the pornography that his father write, wrote, especially the unpublished pornographic comics that he wrote. Now, his father was not a trained artist, so you could tell that the, the way it was described that his um, pictures weren't that good, but extremely disturbing, but extremely fascinating how you got this extremely intelligent man who wrote very good science fiction novel, became totally obsessed with pornography and essentially paid the bills with pornography much more than science fiction was paying. So I found it a fascinating memoir. And it is, I'm including this trashy because, you know, pornography is, of course, trashy. And you get a look into a little bit of how people become pornographers and the, the inside cabal, I said not cabal, uh, the, the, the groups of people who enjoy specific types of pornography and trade it and want to talk about it. And this was well before the internet. So you have you have letters between supposedly respectable gentlemen communicating with this pornographer. I highly recommend it. Chris Offit is wonderfully descriptive. You could hear the, the sentences just ringing in this audiobook. He is a good author. I have read some of his uh, Chris Offit's short stories in one of his novels. So he is a very talented literary author. And he's also a very good memoirist because I really enjoyed my father, the pornographer. And that is what I have read for the fourth week of Garbagist. There is um, sort of a half week remaining in the month, and I am going to be trying to squeeze in one more trashy book before I call it a month, after I finish a more literary book, because I'm just getting a little tired of just trash in August. So I had to muck it up and include some an existentialist novel by an Italian author. Well, anyway, thank you for watching and keep on reading trashy books.